is I wanted to show you um, a little bit about Strawson's algorithm. So just uh, 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 so Strawson's algorithm for matrix multiplication. Uh, this is in your textbook. It's explained online in various places. It is a super famous algorithm, but I just feel like uh, it's one that that everyone should see at some point. Um, so I know that some of you are, oh, I should probably share my screen um, before you start um, wondering what it is that I'm pointing at with my mouse. Uh, okay, uh, so I think my screen is being shared. Uh, yes. So uh, matrix multiplication problem. Uh, so I think some of you work with matrices a lot more than other people work with matrices. Uh, again, if you're less comfortable with matrices, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is not like absolutely required material that you need to know, but a lot of you will see matrices come up in various contexts, uh, computer graphics, uh, data mining, machine learning. And so um, there's, yeah, basically Strawson came up with an amazingly clever way to, um, uh, yeah, to do matrix multiplication. So basically, uh, matrix multiplication, if you're a little out of practice on this, uh, to multiply matrices, we go across the row and down the column. So if I'm trying to figure out what is the top left item in the answer, I multiply this matrix by this matrix, uh, First, I go and take this column and I pair it up this row, this column, and I do like A times A. So I do like A times A, uh, B times E, C times I, D times M. So I'm pairing up corresponding entries of this row and this column is the heart of matrix multiplication. Um, I have a notes document that I'm going to jump over to shortly to uh, to clarify this. But first I do first row, first column. Then I do first row, second column. Then I do first row, third column. Then I do first row, um, fourth column. So um, like A times D, B times H, C times L. D times P. So I just wanted to have the thing I could scribble on. But now if we go over to my notes document, right? So this is a um, another look at matrix multiplication. Uh, we have our matrix here like A, B, C, D, 1, 5, 1, 5, 2, 6, 2, 6. Um, and to multiply, to multiply, uh, you pair up the elements across the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second matrix. So the top left entry, uh, let's see if I can, yeah. Um, so the top left entry in the answer matrix is going to be one times A plus five times B plus one times C plus five times D. So I'm doing right there's one. Uh, so this is a four by four matrix. And so there's one, two, three, four things that I need to calculate to find the top left entry. And once I'm done with the top left entry, then I go and say, like, again, and if this is like, uh, X, then um, I'm building up my answer matrix. Uh, let's see, my ASCII art is not awesome here, but uh, um, I'm building up my answer matrix, and I would go and put like the X in the upper left corner of the answer matrix. And then similarly, uh, I would go and uh, then calculate the second entry in the top row. Uh, um, 
uh, we could call this y, and then like this would be y. So basically, I'm going and I'm I'm filling in uh, each entry in the answer matrix. So I'm going to have 16 entries in my answer matrix, and for each of those entries, I need to do this type of formula, uh, like grab. Um, there's right there's four rows here, four columns here. I pair up every possible every row with every possible column to get the 16 entries in the answer. Um, so um, what I want you to believe, and this is like first and most important, is this is a four by four matrix. There are n squared and four squared. This is a four by four matrix, so there are 16 entries in the matrix, which is like n squared. So if you have n rows and n columns, there are n squared entries that you need to compute. And computing each of these entries, like computing y or computing x, is like O of n work. Uh, this is right, so you have. I have O of n work, and I'm doing this O of n work n squared times. I'm doing like O of four, right, n is four. So I'm doing like four amount of work, and I'm doing it 16 times. So that should be like big O of n cubed time in order to multiply the matrix. Um, right, the, the basic idea here is I'm going to loop through each of the n squared entries in the answer matrix, and then I have to do a, a loop from one to n. I need to do O of n work for each of the n squared entries in the answer matrix, and that's how I get my n cubed. Um, so I want to pause here and give anyone an, uh, an opportunity to ask a question. Um, do you, is there anything that I can say to clarify why multiplying matrices is an n cubed algorithm? Uh, I just wanted to check out something. Sure. Uh, it's 2, uh, two n and we simplify it to be n, right? Um, I'm sorry, the, um, it's... Uh, the work that we do across one oh, row, one column. Right, so it's right, so it's, it's, n multiplications plus n basically it's n multiplications plus n additions oh, okay right. right you do like n pluses and n times so right again this is like n again right order n plus n is equal to n okay yeah, yeah. i was just yeah. Well, I yep, was... Yep. yep nope okay. nope you're exactly right yep so you're doing uh uh yeah so it's it's o of n work right it's like um, so this is really going to be like 2n cubed, but we say that 2n cubed is like O of n cubed. So that's an okay. excellent question. Thank you. Um, anyone else have a question on the runtime of this? Oh. Oops. Oh, oops. Ah. Change my notes so that they're actually correct. So unfortunately, if you're dealing with a thousand by a thousand matrix, um, n cubed is actually pretty slow. Um, and so, and it turns out that matrix multiplication, um, so it is very common in um, like computer graphics that you're interested in doing matrix multiplication where the size of the matrix is like the resolution of your image. Um, and so if I have like a thousand by a thousand display um, screen and I'm doing matrix multiplication, like a thousand cubes starts to get kind of big. And heaven forbid I get like a higher resolution image or bigger matrices. Um, machine learning people come up with absolutely absurdly large matrices. And so uh, getting something uh, a little bit better than n cubed could be really useful in some application like uh, computer graphics or um, uh, uh, machine learning. 
Um, now, yeah. Um, and actually, like machine learning, matrix multiplication is actually so important that modern graphics cards actually have um, matrix multiplication algorithms um, embedded in the hardware that they actually uh, implement, um, like using circuits in the hardware, matrix multiplication as a like a a fundamental operation of the graphics card because it's something that gets used so often. And it really matters if your matrix multiplication is fast. Um, so let's see. Uh, no comments. Okay. Okay. So um, let's divide and conquer. Um, so the idea with the divide and conquer algorithm, which is a really clever idea, is that hey, like this, this is just a two by two matrix, right? We can say like. Let's divide this here. And so now we have a small matrix. Yeah. Um, now, um, instead of looking at this as four numbers, let's think of this as one smaller matrix. So this is a small matrix. 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 Is a small matrix. And the question is, can we think about multiplying the big matrix as just a way of, like, in terms of multiplying small matrices, right? That, that's, what, that's what divide and conquer is all about, is thinking about the big problem in terms of working with smaller problems. Um, so, um, and I'll go, I'll bring up my note screen where maybe this is a little bit more clear. But the idea is that I'm going to take, say, uh, this matrix, I'll multiply this matrix times this matrix, and then I'll multiply this matrix by this matrix. And by multiplying these small matrices together, I can go and reconstruct what the answer is. So let me go and toss this over on. Um, um, yeah, so let me go and toss this over on this screen. So what I want to do is I want to uh, write this matrix as being like, instead of calling this, uh, let's see if I can do this, that I just want to say that this is like, um, uh, um, uh, what's the, uh, A's may be a problem. I'm running, I really like. Let's try this, see if this works. Oh, okay. This is probably the, uh, the wrong way to be doing this. Um, my apologies. Um, uh, so this is, let's just kill this. Um, Okay, um, and I'm going to call this like matrix. Uh, oops, matrix uh, X. Okay, 
So what I've done here is I've gone and subdivided the matrix. So subdivide the matrix into four smaller matrices. Uh, each one is size n over two. Um, okay, great. Now, um, so basically like matrix alpha is equal to um, a, b, e, f, right? So this is a, b, and similarly like matrix beta is equal to one, two, five, six. One, two, five, six, okay? So does this subdivision make sense? I'm sorry, I'm, um, this is, we're approaching the point where like the, um, yeah, we're approaching the point where the magic happens. And so I wanna make sure people are with me at this point. I've subdivided the matrix into uh, smaller matrices. Uh, let's see, so this is, uh... <laughs> yeah, so I know, actually I think a number of you, not all of you, but a number of you are taking linear algebra right now. Um, so, um, so the key idea, um, the answer matrix is really, uh, let's do this, the answer matrix is really, um, can I go and, Huh. Um, so kill this part over here, which I don't need. Um, so remember we had, so the answer matrix is going to be, let's see if I can actually get this in some useful way. Um, it's gonna be alpha times X plus, uh, so this is L, take matrix alpha times matrix X plus beta times W. And then this is going to be, uh, so to get the upper left corner, you take the alpha matrix times the matrix X, and then you take the matrix beta times the matrix W and multiply. So you do this multiplication, this multiplication, add them together. So this is a matrix times a matrix plus a matrix times a matrix. And the magic of linear algebra and the like linearity of matrix multiplication is that um, we can go and write the answer matrix in terms of uh, multiplication of these smaller matrices. So this is gonna be then, this is beta times y uh, plus, um, no, this is alpha times y, uh, beta times z, okay? Uh, and this dash here is just an imaginary line in the middle of the matrix for my benefit. Um, so this is uh, gamma times x plus, um, uh, delta times W, uh, and then similarly over here, we now are doing gamma Y delta Z. So the bottom row and the rightmost column, so this is uh, gamma times Y plus uh, delta times, uh. So, uh, so this is a two by two matrix. This is a two by two matrix. 
this is a two by two matrix, this is a two by two matrix, and if you stack them up um, into this configuration, you get a 16 by 16 matrix, which is the product. Um, so this was, this step I know is a little bit strange. So the idea is that, um, so when we're doing this matrix multiplication, we took like um, this row, um, uh, let's do like, we did this row and then we did like uh, this column. So we do this row and this column. And so the important observation here is that, well, this is part of alpha, this is part of beta, this is part of X, X, this is part of W. So the, the sub-matrices that matter here are alpha, beta, X, and W. Um, figuring out the top left here, figuring out the top left doesn't involve Y, it doesn't involve Z, uh, it doesn't involve delta. So basically the idea here is when you separate out these uh, sub-matrices that figuring out the top left requires alpha, x, beta, and w, but it doesn't require the other sub-matrices. So we can go and like divide this up and focus our attention on like only, um, I'm not explaining this well, uh, focus our attention on only the sub-matrices that matter for the upper left-hand corner. So does this divide and, divide and conquer algorithm make sense? The idea is in order to go and multiply a four by four matrix, I'm instead going to go and do a bunch of multiplications of two by two matrices, right? Because everything here is like, uh, everything here is like two by two. Uh, questions, anything I can say to make this divide and conquer algorithm make sense? Right, so the, so the, for a matrix of any size, we always want to split it down to two by two matrices? Uh, uh, for me, thank you so much. So you like uh, start, let's, let's, so the divide and conquer approach is you start with an N by N matrix. And then what you do is you, uh, uh, break it into four n over two by four. Let's uh, actually write out four. Um, four n over two by n over two matrices, um, and then um, uh, compute the answer by doing um, addition and multiplication of the half-sized matrices. Uh, does that answer your question, Olympia? Yes, thank you. Yep, so you you always break it in half. Uh, and this is again a very common divide and conquer approach that if I had a if I had a size of thousand matrix, um oh and then of course the like uh recursion do the um so right so let's say i start with a thousand by a thousand I break up the thousand by a thousand matrix. I break it up into 500 by 500, 500 by 500. So I have four matrices that are each like size 500. And now I need to do some multiplication here 
So when I need to multiply a 500 matrix by a 500 matrix, um, I'm just going to go and call matrix multiplication recursively, which will split it up into 250 by 250. And this is the like, right? So clearly we like um, uh, stop once you get to uh, one by one or two by two matrices, uh, which you can just brute force. Um, what is right. the efficiency of this though? Like with all the recursion compared to one? Ah, wonderful. I love new college students are incredible. Yes. Um, so, so is this fast? Um, right. Our, our time to beat was n cubed. There's a whole lot of recursion here. Um, like, have we actually gotten any better? Um, so, uh, the recurrence. Um, so, uh, as computer scientists, theoretical computer scientists, um, the first thing we want to do is say, well, what is the time to like? Uh, so let's uh, t of n is the time to multiply uh, an n by n n by to multiply let's say two n by n uh, matrices. Okay, so uh, t of n is equal to um some right so what we need to do here is we need to go and do some multiplications of these smaller matrices and then we need to do some additions um does that make sense uh so um so if Alpha and X, alpha, beta, X, and W, everything here is a half-sized matrix. Um, so um, I guess maybe the first question, yeah, so like how many multiplications and how many additions do we need to do? Is that? Um, well, for a four by four matrix, we did two multiplications. So I would assume that for, um, any matrix of N size, we would be doing N divided by two multiplications. Uh, maybe? Yeah. So no, so that's, yeah. So, uh, let me see if I can clarify here. So th thank you again. This is why I really appreciate people speaking up because it helps me realize where I haven't been clear. So... Um, so regardless, so let's say that, um, let's say we started with a thousand by thousand matrix. If we started with a thousand by 1000 matrix, then this is 500, alpha's 500, beta's 500, X and Y, each of these are 500. So no matter how big we start with, we are always breaking it into four pieces. Um, and because we're always breaking it into four pieces, then, um, we, the number of the number, so the number of multiplications that we have to do, um, uh, at one step here, the number of like recursive multiplication calls is the same regardless of how big our matrix is. Does that make sense? Yes, I think I understand. Yeah. So this is the like, um, yeah. So then this is, but I really appreciate people speaking up because it real it helps me to realize where I've been unclear. Um, so there are eight multiplications here, uh, and each of these would have to be a recursive call. So again, like I'm, I'm in the um, so I'm in the world of like thousand by thousand matrices. So I have here 
um, I need to do this multiplication, which is, um, uh, we'll just say, uh, so, um, this multiplication, uh, let's see if I can explain this right. Yeah. So each of these multiplications is going to be a recursive call in our divide and conquer algorithm. And each of these additions, well, we'll just brute force the additions. And by brute force, I mean we'll just loop through the entire 500 by 500 matrix or the n over 2 by n over 2 matrix. We'll just loop through the whole darn thing and do the addition like the old fashioned way. Um, so this is like four additions. Um, is that so? Questions on this? Do we buy um, and these uh, adds and molts are n over two by n over two? Um, questions about this? Anything I can say that would clarify this? So T of N is equal to eight times T of N over two plus four times. Um, so if I'm uh, time to add, uh, um, this is like, So how long does it take me to add two n over two by n over two matrices? So the time to multiply an n over two matrix is just T of n over two, because like that's how I defined T of n over two. Um, uh, um, Uh, no. Uh, so how long does it take me to go and add together two n over two by n over two matrices? Right to, right, to add, we go and loop through every row and every column um, and do one addition for every entry in the matrix. So we're looping through every row of a matrix and every column of a matrix. Does this make sense? So, question? Ah, Jan, yes, okay. So this is uh, n squared over four, which I think someone typed into chat. Uh, yes, 
Uh, right. So this is like n squared over 4, which is like O of n squared. So um, we now have our recursion, or our recurrence, I'm sorry, our recurrence relation. Uh, let's go back to black ink. Um, so our recurrence relation is now um, uh, 4 times uh, n squared over 4 which is 8 times p of n squared plus uh, o of n squared. Okay. Okay. So now we have a recurrence for this great new divide and conquer algorithm. And then, um, so we had talked last time, and I certainly don't expect you to remember the details, but there is a master theorem that is in your textbook that you can use to uh, look up the answer to this type of recurrence. And the master theorem says that, um, uh, so master theorem, this rec um, uh, calculate uh, log of eight divided by log of two uh, equals key. And the uh, answer is uh, um, so this is actually one of three cases of the master theorem. But the um, in this case we are, and again you can look back at the master theorem if you want to verify. But we're in the case where there are a ton of leaves on our tree. Um, if you look at the recursion tree, we are making a lot of recursive calls here. Um, in order to solve this problem, we're making a lot of recursive calls. And so um, what uh, the tree ends up being very bottom heavy. We have lots of recursive calls in our tree. And if we go and consult the master theorem, the master theorem will tell us, yes, you have a ton of leaves in your tree, and the answer is going to be n to the key where key is log 8 over log 2. Um, and again, you could just um, stick into your calculator like what is log 8 over log 2, but uh, this is um, so log 8 over log 2 is 3. So this is a O of uh, n cubed uh, runtime. Okay. Um, so, other than the fact that there was some, you know, you would, you'd have to do a, uh, a look up here to, re like, I don't expect anyone to remember the details of the master theorem, but if you go and Google for or look up in your textbook the master theorem, you can see that we have eight recursive calls and because we have eight recursive calls and each of them are size n over two, we end up with a very leaf heavy recursion tree and this is an O of n cubed runtime. Um, so this is kind of the answer to Courtney's question. Um, we spent a lot of effort here and we started out with a n of cubed algorithm which was just looping through our entire matrix. And then we changed it to a recursive algorithm and like did some additional work to like break things apart and recombine them. And the answer is we still have an O of n cubed algorithm. And so everything that I've done for the last like half an hour um, has gotten us nowhere. Um, that makes sense, questions? Um, questions like why am I wasting your time? Uh, so, uh, um, so,
So the problem here is that this method that I showed you requires eight recursive multiplication calls, right? There's a multiplication there, multiplication there, multiplication there, multiplication there. Mult, 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 mult. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. So the, um, uh, um, so, okay. Um, so the thing I'm going to finish here is this is the like brilliant insight of Strawson. And this is one of these like amazing moments in the history of theoretical computer science where I cannot give you any insight into um, what Strawson, like what state of mind Strawson may have been in or what he was imbibing when he um, uh, had this, this insight because like I don't know how you can replicate this type of uh, brilliant insight, but Strawson's insight was actually we only need seven multiplications. Actually, uh, if we're smart, uh, we can use uh, more additions and fewer multiplications. So, uh, for example, uh, let's see if I can actually pull this off. Um, so, um, Let's say that, uh, so, um, um, so this is like, sorry, uh, I think my matrix was X, Y, W, Z. Um, so if we have, let's say, um, I'm looking at my notes here because I can never, I would never ever remember this, um, Y minus Z. Um, and we let P2 equal, um, uh, let's say alpha plus beta times C, then So, um, so here we are doing two multiplications to calculate um, this piece up here. And Strawson said, well, there's another way that you can do two multiplications to calculate um, alpha y times beta z, um, or alpha times y plus beta times z. Um, he came up with another way that you can get this with two multiplications. But the, um, okay, so this this still hasn't bought, bought us anything. Uh, so this is, this doesn't immediately get us anything unless we can reuse either P1 or P2. So, Basically, what Strawson did is he came up with seven incredibly clever multiplications so that each of these four things can be written in terms of um, can be written in terms of his seven super clever multiplications. So um, here are Strawson's uh, seven super clever um, multiplications. Uh, 
And again, this is the kind of thing that you're you're not going to memorize. You are always going to go and uh, look this up. Uh, gamma plus delta times x um, and p4 equals uh, delta times uh, let's see g minus. Let's see, this is w minus z and uh, p5 equals, there's only seven of these, so I'm almost done, uh, alpha plus uh, delta times uh, x plus z, uh, p6 equals uh, beta minus delta times W plus C, and then P7 is uh, alpha minus uh, uh, gamma. Uh, 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 each of the four. Uh, question? Um, uh, no, I want to pin myself so I don't get that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, aha! Yes! Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so Maria asks an excellent question here. Um, and um, so, um, I'm just gonna, I'll get to your question in just a minute, uh, Maria, but, um, uh, um, uh, I'll get to Maria's question in just a minute, but first I just want to say, for example, um, uh, the, like, let's say the, like, upper left is, the uh, upper left was alpha x plus uh, beta, um, and I think this is like uh, alpha x plus beta w, and uh, so uh, um, Uh, I'm not going to do the check here, but like the upper right is P1 plus P2, C above, uh, the uh, Lower left is uh, P3 plus P4, and the lower right is um, uh, um, okay, so um. I'll get to your question in just a moment, Korea. Uh, so for uh, let's see. So our new recursion, our new recurrence is uh, Q 
Is 2.81 the right answer? Did anyone actually do that math? I think somebody put that in chat. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. So then, um, This was 2.81, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, excellent. So, uh, now let me go. And before we finish here, I just want to hit a couple of theoretical questions. So, first of all, what should you take away from this? What you should take away from this is that using divide and conquer here um, allowed us to get a faster algorithm by very cleverly shaving down the number of recursive calls that we need to make. And basically, in a divide and conquer solution in general, the, the number of recursive calls you have to make is often a really big deal. And this is in particular like the difference between binary search, which is really fast, and merge sort, which is much slower, is merge sort has to make two recursive calls, whereas binary search only has to make one recursive call. So shaving off recursive calls is very powerful in divide and conquer. Um, now, the next thing obviously is, you know, um, should we care? And part of this might depend on um, like what types of problems do you work on? So, um, I guess this is is uh, O of n cubed really different from uh, O of n to the 2.81? And the answer is, uh, in theory, definitely. So um, theorists are always very interested in coming up with better runtime bounds. So O of n to the 2.9 or 2.8 is less than O of n to the 3. And so from a theorist perspective, theorists get really, really excited anytime you can shrink the thing in the big O. Um, so this is primarily a theoretical result. Um, in practice, uh, only for very large um, uh, matrices where storage is cheap for when. Um, so, um, yeah, so only, uh, so first of all, you, for large N, like, again, and you can, you can compute this, but like, um, a, uh, a billion cubed versus a billion, to the 2.81 um, are actually pretty different uh, sized numbers. And so from a time perspective, if you're working with super large matrices, um, the difference between a billion cubed and a billion to the 2.81 could be the difference between your machine learning algorithm runs over the weekend versus your machine learning algorithm takes several months to run. Um, so like these things can matter for very big matrices, although um, it should be noted uh, Strawson's algorithm is uh, very space inefficient. Uh, and if you're, if you're interested in this type of stuff, um, I believe, although I haven't read recently, but I believe I remember from grad school, there, there were this interesting theoretical work on reducing the space requirements for matrix multiplication. So a naive implementation, um, at least the, yeah, uh, the natural, Um, so we're, we're going and creating new matrices and then 
um, we need to like remember these new matrices that we create, and then we need to make recursive calls in the future using these matrices. And so, like, yeah, this is fairly space inefficient, um, but um, certainly at least compared to regular matrix multiplication. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, if your matrices are very large and you have plenty of storage available, th this can actually be a noticeable win. But the answer to Maria's question is really, um, mostly it is theoreticians and not practitioners who care about shaving something down from n cubed to n to the 2.8. Um, also, there's further work beyond Strawson, um, like if breaking it into four, like if breaking our matrix up into four sub-matrices is good, what if we break our matrix up into eight sub-matrices? And so there's additional work beyond Strawson for instead of doing like seven multiplications of half size matrices can we do like some number of multiplications of quarter sized matrices and get even better so um there's additional work in this direction that comes up with uh like you can actually get this 2.8 down to 2.7 something i forget exactly what the best known is but there's there's additional work in this direction to generalize the technique so anyway, um, this is a bit of a theory class. Uh, this is a, um, a mostly theoretical insight, but I think it's also a very like beautiful and genius theoretical insight. And so I would be remiss if I didn't at least expose you to this idea.